Hey, shalom to the house of Israel. Uh, just wanted to come to you today. I had uh, a statement that was made to me about my hair being too long. So what's you all's thoughts on that? What's what's your uh, your views on that? If you would put those in the comments uh, so that I could read them. Um, and as always, I will tell you that if you're belligerent, I won't respond to it whatsoever. Um, but if you can talk to me with respect, if you can make statements with respect as if one brother uh, treats another brother, uh, I'll, I'll be glad to speak on that subject and to, to dialogue. One thing we got we to gotta really understand as men in Israel, uh, w our war is not against each other. And it appears that sometimes we war against each other. We're not warring with each other. As a matter of fact, we're supposed to war together against the enemies of the Most High. We're supposed to war together with the world. But it seems like people want to pull out their swords and start fighting with other brothers. Now, if you want to pull your sword out of the scabbard and show it to me, I can pull mine out of the scabbard and show it to you. And we can look at the different nicks and discuss what our swords um, have been through, discuss what our swords have shown us, what they have done. And by sword, I'm meaning the word. We can pull the word out in dialogue about it, but we have to be careful how we speak to each other. We're supposed to have love for one another. If you see me in error, the first thing, well, well the last thing that you want to do is you, you, would, you don't want to come at a person to cause them to shut down and be defensive, okay? We have to use love, brotherly love, kinsman love when we talk to each other. Another thing is, is we put little comments down and it, you, can, you can tell by reading the comments uh, what the people are saying and it's very rude. So I wanna know what you all think about uh, men having long hair. Now, let me explain to you, and this is what I wish the brother would have said to me. I mean, brother Yoshia, can you explain to me how you justify or why you have long hair? And I would have been glad to dialogue about that, all right? I'm not one who wants to be disobedient to the Most High at all, all right? If, if I'm wrong, I, I'll cut this stuff off in a heartbeat. <laughs> I have no problem with it. My wife knows I have no problem with it. Uh, but I will explain why. But first, I want to use the scripture that was given to me to show me that I was wrong. OK, so first, um, let's go to we'll, we'll start in the um, older covenant first. OK, we'll go to Numbers chapter six, verse two through twenty seven. Numbers chapter six, verse two through twenty seven. And again, you know, I can be wrong about a lot of things. All right. Um, and if I am wrong, I will correct it. Um, I have no problem being humble when, when I'm wrong. I just want to be right before the most high. And if I'm wrong before him, I'll correct it. Okay. So we're going to start, let's go ahead and start looking. I won't read the whole thing because I, I won't need to, but let's go ahead and at least get started. It says, and Yahuwah spoke to Moshe saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when a man or a woman does separate by making a vow of a Nazarite to be separate to Yahuwah. Remember, when they make a vow, okay? When they make a vow of a Nazarite. Verse uh, two, verse three, he separates himself from wine and strong drink. He drinks neither vinegar or wine nor vinegar of strong drink. Neither does he drink any grape juice nor eat grapes or raisins. All the days of his separation, he does not eat whatever is made of the grapevine from seed to skin. All the days of the vow of his separation, a razor does not come up on his head. Until the days are completed, for which do, does separate himself to Yahuwah, he is set apart. He shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow long. All the days of his separation to Yahuwah, he does not go near a dead body. He does not make for himself unclean, uh, unclean for his father or for his mother, 
for his brother or his sister uh, when they die because of the separation um, to the Most High. Okay, so we see that this is someone who is taking a Nazarite vow, all right? I am not taking a Nazarite vow, okay? I'm not, my hair is not long because I am taking a Nazarite vow. I don't have to shave my head after the vow is over with for a sacrifice because I have not taken a Nazarite vow, okay? So in context, this Torah is for a person who is taking a Nazarite vow. You are to not let razor, a razor touch your head. No, no wine, no grape juice, none of that stuff. Okay. And then after your Nazarite vow has been completed, you are to take a raise, razor to your head. Okay. I am not taking a Nazarite vow. That scripture does not concern me because I'm not taking one. Number one, we have no physical temple. Number two, we have no physical priesthood at this point right now, okay? So that would pertain to someone who is taking a Nazarite vow that does not pertain to me. Okay, let's go to the next one. Ezekiel 44 and verse 20. Ezekiel 44 and verse 20. And I want to read these scriptures because, you know, I, I want to make sure that we get understanding from what is actually being said, not how we used to do it when we were involved in religion. Old pastor says this, so this is what we got to do, or we'll read something and we'll read exactly what it says, but we don't put it in context of what has been taking place. And then we want to use that as a doctrine to put on someone else. We cannot do that. Okay. We, we have to be legitimate with using the scripture of the most high. Okay, so I'm going to read verse 19 and 20. Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 19 and verse 20. And when you go out of the outer courtyard to the outer courtyard to the people, they shall take off their garments in which they have attended and shall leave them in the set apart rooms and shall put on other garments and they shall not set the people apart in their set apart garments and their heads they shall not shave, nor shall they let their hair grow long. They shall keep their hair well trimmed. And no priest is to drink wine when he comes into the inner court. Okay, let's look at verse 15. But the priest, the Levites, the sons of Sadat, who guarded the duty of my set apart place when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall draw near to me to serve me. Okay, I'm not a priest, all right? I'm not a Levitical priest that I know of. I am not a son of Zadok. So when this future kingdom comes in, I don't, I'm, I'm not a priest, okay? If I find out that I am a Levitical priest, well, hey, praise the most high. Guess what I'll have to do? I will have to cut my hair. Why? Because I can't go into the inner courtyard. If <laughs> I have to be trimmed properly in order to do that. But again, in context, I am not a priest. So this particular Torah or this description here does not come upon me. So I don't base how I grow my hair or how long I grow my hair on this particular verse because this is pertaining to a priest. Now, I know that there were men in Israel. Look at David's son. David's son, um, he, he cut Absalom. He weighed his hair. His hair was so long. Matter of fact, that's actually what kind of caused his death because he got hung up in some trees and some branches. Okay, so men of Israel did have long locks. So again, what we're doing is, is we're taking our opinion or something that has been taught to us a certain way, and we're trying to put that doctrine on other people. But even so, if I, if I believed that, that that applied to men of Israel, then I would respectfully go to a brother and I would ask him, why do you do your hair like that? If, you know, Torah says that we should not. Okay. But as we can see here, 
The Nazarite vow does not pertain to me. I'm not taking a Nazarite vow. The priests, the sons of Sadak, I'm not a son of Sadak that I know of, that I'm aware of. And if I do become one, I will cut my hair if I'm going to be one selected to go into the inner courts. Okay. All right. So you see how we can take things out of context and we can read it and not put it into its true context. And we'll try to make a doctrine and throw that on somebody else. So right now I haven't found any scripture at this point that tells me to tell another brother he needs to cut his hair. I, I haven't found that yet. All right. When y'all do, please shoot it to me, but I just haven't found that yet. Okay. Let's go to uh, first Corinthians. Let's go to chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11. We just want to make sure that we do things properly. Okay. We want to make sure that we do divide the most high's word. I'm, I'm not perfect by no means and, and nor do I know everything. But if, if I do something, I'm going to make sure that I have the information. And definitely if I go to another brother and challenge another brother, I'm going to make sure that I have the information, the proper information to be able to do that. OK, so this is talking about this is first Corinthians chapter 11 It's talking about the covering. OK. All right. We'll start at verse one. Become imitators of me as I also am of Messiah. And I praise you, brothers, that you remember me in every way and keep the traditions as I delivered them to you. And I wish to know that the head of every man is Messiah and the head of woman is the man and the head of Messiah is Elohim. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, bring shame to his head. Okay. When we were in church, they told us we had to take our hats off. Brothers wear kufis today and pray. So we got, we got all kind of different things that are going on amongst the nation. Okay. Verse five, and every woman praying or prophesying with her head uncovered brings shame to her head, for that is one and the same as if her head were shaved. For if a woman is not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it is a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaved, let her head be covered. So at um, what we do is with my wife and with my daughters, Sometimes my daughters wear head coverings and my wife wear head, head coverings. Okay, so if they don't happen to have one on, what they'll do is they'll take a head covering and just slide it over their head while they pray or while we read scripture. Okay, so that way there's no, you, you know, we see people who say a woman's got to have a head covering on her head all the time. You know, we, we come into these things and it creates confusion and it creates problems amongst Israel. So for me and my house, my wife and my daughters normally wear a head covering. If they don't have a head covering on and we get ready to read or pray, they'll just take one and slide it over their head and just let it drape down over them while they read and while they pray. It's very simple. It's not hard to do. If Even if we only halfway understand what Shaul is saying, you know, that's just something that we at least we know that we can do something that's very simple. Women, if you don't believe and your husband is telling you that you don't have to wear a head covering, listen to your head. Listen to your husband. If your husband says, hey, hon, you don't have to wear a head covering when we're out. It's just when we pray uh, or when we read the scripture, you know, just take it and just veil, put it over your head, you know, out, out of respect. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, verse seven, for a man indeed should not cover his head since he is the likeness and the esteem of Elohim. But woman is the esteem of man for man is not from woman, but woman from man. For man also was not created for the woman, but woman for the man. Because of this, the woman ought to have authority on her head because of, of this, the messengers, because of the messengers. However, man is not independent of woman, nor woman independent of man and the master. For as the woman was from the man, even so the man also is through the woman, but all are from Elohim. So yeah, woman does come from us, but guess what? When we born, we come from a woman. <laughs> Ain't it a paradox? But it's Yah, he's awesome. 13, judge for yourself if it is proper for a woman to pray to Elohim with her head uncovered. It says judge for yourself. Don't force it on nobody. Judge for yourself. Does not nature itself teach you that if a man indeed has long hair, it is a disrespect to him. And if a woman has long hair, 
it is an esteem to her because the long hair has been given to her over against a veil. Okay, verse 16, pay very close attention to because we miss it. If, however, anyone seems to be contentious, we do not have such a habit, nor does the assemblies of Elohim. All right, so let's we got to ask some questions here. What was actually going on in Corinth to make Paul have to write this? What was going on in the culture in Corinth to cause Paul to have to write this? Okay, so in Corinth, you're dealing in Corinth and you're dealing with a lot of false pagan deity worship that has been going on. And these people are turning and coming to Yah. They are coming into the assemblies. So I'm not going to put up any information that's going to teach someone how others worship their deity. I'm not going to do that. All right. But I will say this to you. I'm going to use one name and for teaching purposes only. Okay. So the worshipers of Dionysius, these were men. They had, they followed Dionysius. Dionysius is believed to be uh, the false deity of orgies, the false deities of homosexuality, the false, he's a false deity who is, uh, according to Google, when you even research, he's queer. That's what it says. I'm not saying that in a derogatory way. That's just what it says. Okay, so his guys, the men who followed him, guess what they did? They grew long hair as to look like women. They were like transgender. That's kind of what Dionysius was. He was a transgender deity. He played both sides. Okay, so his followers, guess what they did? They grew long hair like a woman. And uh, the, sh the guys who were coming into the ports in Corinth who were homosexuals, they came and they were looking for these men with long hair or these young boys that had long hair. It was perverted. So guess what? When these men started coming into belief, guess what they, they were doing? They, they had still had ways of their paganism. So Shaul had to teach them about that. Okay, he had to get the men to stop dressing like that because in their day in Corinth, having long hair meant that you were involved in homosexual activity. That because that's how they worship their deities. For the women, I'm not even you have I'm not going to I'm not going to say the names. But for the women, they followed goddesses that had short hair. They were like manly. So Guess what? They were coming in shaved heads, no hair. So they didn't have uh they didn't have long hair. They were trying to be manly. So when these people come up into the assembly, Paul has to get correction of that. He has to go after them about that. A man should not look like this according to the culture of their time. Now think about it. Some of the men of Israel, Ezekiel had locks, and they were so long that a messenger picked him up by them. Absalom had locks. There were Samson had locks. Yes, he was all through his life. Yes, he was a Nazarite involved in a Nazarite vow, but he still had long hair. So men in Israel did have long hair. And I'm going to post up a, um, a, a photo of an Iranian Hebrew who has long hair. Okay. So only if you're taking the Nazarite vow does that pertain to you, but pay attention. And I'm getting ready to close here. Just give me one second. If, however, anyone seems to be contentious, we do not have such habits or customs. If you look at other translations, they'll say we don't have such customs. Like this wasn't an issue for the house of Israel or for the assemblies of Messiah. This, this wasn't an issue. Why? Because our men didn't worship false deities who were homosexuals. Our sisters didn't worship false deities who were homosexuals and caused them to cut their hair off. That wasn't known amongst Israel. That wasn't our custom. So we didn't have a custom. Our long hair was because it grew long. It wasn't because we were doing it for a deity. All right. So that's why Paul says, if there's anyone who's contentious, we don't even have customs like this. So he's having to teach something that is outside of his own custom. 
He said, I'm going to teach this to people who had a custom of worship, worshiping paganism. All right. So my question is, is my hair a salvation issue? I don't believe it is. According to what I've read in my study, I don't see anything wrong with a man having long hair in the culture that we're in today. If you look at me today in our culture, does my hair say that I'm a homosexual? No, it does not. You have Jamaicans who wear their hair. People are used to brothers having long hair and locks. It's not a big deal today. Now, if the custom was or the habit was that men who had locks and long hair, they were homosexuals, then guess what? I would not have them, okay? But that's not our custom. That is not our habit for today, all right? So I hope this was some understanding and to the Most High's word. Please don't go out and judge a brother by his hair being uh, long, okay? Don't, don't do that. Don't do that at all. So um, for someone would ask me about a sister, about a sister having short hair. Hey, I love to see long hair on a sister. It's their crown. It's their beauty. All right. But if her husband tells her that he feels OK, according to his studying for her to have short hair. What is it for me to say that that man is her head? And if her head says that it's OK, then it's OK. All right. So this is not a salvation issue and we need to stop making it a salvation issue. All right. So I hope this was good for you. I hope this gave some understanding to that. Uh, it's really deep when you go in and look and study the culture of what was going on in Corinth in that day and how they worship their false deities. All right. And so if you don't have an understanding of that, you won't understand what Paul is saying. And you're going to take face value at the word of a man not having long hair, okay? And Paul was fighting against a culture that was very wicked during that time, like it is today, but very wicked during that time, okay? So same thing, there's nothing new up under the sun, um, but it is not our custom. So I hope this was uh, good for you. I hope you got understanding. I hope you got nourishment from it. And um, all I wanna do is please the most high. And again, if anyone can show me that my hair is wrong, I will cut my hair. I have no problem with that whatsoever. What matters to me is what he thinks. All right. You all take care. And I say shalom, shalom to your brothers and sisters. Shalom.